Hi everyone, it's Steve aka Free Flying here with a demonstration of my Boost app. So here's what I'm flying. I've got a Mavic uh, Pro using mixed mod firmware. If you don't know how to do that, you can look in the links uh, below of this video. And then I'm using uh, the newest version of DJI Go on an Android device, 4.2.8, uh, with my Boost V2 app. So on our left, we've got uh, two flights that are, we're going to do, one using the DJI Go, one using the Boost app. You can see I'm starting up on the left with the uh, DJI Go 4 and on the right with the Boost app. Always ignore your um, updates for uh, no-fly zones. So the top one is loaded up into the newest version of DJI Go. On the bottom, in order to use the Boost app, I have to first load up into the Boost app, make sure I'm seen out of the camera of the drone. Then I exit the Boost app and then start DJI Go 4. So uh, I have to hit OK so that it can connect to the USB there. So now I'm in the newest version of DJI Go 4 on both the upper and lower video, but the bottom video is using uh, the Boost app to increase the transmit power uh, between the controller and the Mavic. So these flights were done one right after the other on the exact same flight path uh, with me inside of a building through double paned glass with the transmitter uh, mounted in a very specific position uh, in very specific antenna orientation. I wanted every variable to be the same between these two flights other than the use of the Boost app. And so I've synced up the videos uh, so that we can watch the flight as we head out outbound. I intentionally did this flight in a in a very dense um, uh, commercial area. This is being flown from my office building. Uh, you'll notice that already we've got a little bit of uh, interference with the video feed on the non-boost on the top uh, on the top image there. That's because as I took the drone straight up uh, inside my building, I lost line of sight uh, from my window. Once it starts flying out away from me, I have line of sight. Now, I intentionally am doing this from inside a building and in a densely populated area because uh, it is possible with the Boost app uh, to fly the drone further away than what it has enough battery to come back with um, if you're in a non-populated area and standing outside. So I've intentionally done things to limit um, the range that I'm going to get on this flight uh, by putting myself inside a building and being in a very populated area. Now those of you familiar with my Boost app know that you uh, can use three different Boost configuration files. Uh, one will boost at the normal frequency of 2.4 gigahertz which is your Wi-Fi frequency range. Um, one will push it up slightly to a higher frequency of 2.57 gigahertz and another one down to 2.33. This test is being flown at the 2.44 gigahertz. So the frequency, the signal frequency being used for the non-boost and the boost are the same frequency, which is our common Wi-Fi frequency. So you look at this very uh, populated area that I am taking off from, surrounded by Wi-Fi. When I sit in my office and I look on my computer, I see 20 some different Wi-Fi's uh, that I could link my computer to. So it gives you an idea that there's a lot of interference around on the same frequency we're using here and it's going to become difficult pretty quickly to push out from that. I'm flying at the same altitude, 196 to 197 feet, um, and flying, flying uh, straight away from me into the wind, of course, so that I'll be able to come back. I am go the way I did these flights is uh, to fly forward with the stick forward and continue to hold it forward even when signal was lost because you can lose signal and then get it back and then lose it and then get it back. And what you'll notice on the horizontal speed on both of these is it'll start to stutter. It'll start to get uh, slower because as the signal drops and reacquires and drops and reacquires, the drone pauses, stops advancing when it's no longer receiving that forward stick signal, and then does it again. I continued to hold the stick forward until signal was completely lost for long enough that the drone started its auto return to home. So that's my benchmark, is how far can I fly the drone away from me in a, a precisely controlled identical environment until it turns around and starts back because it lost signal for more than three seconds. So you can see we've made it out a mile. 
uh, which is pretty good um, for even stock FCC. Those of you in CE countries, you can't get anywhere near this far. The Boost app hopefully allows you uh, to do everything that you're seeing on the bottom screen. Keep in mind, top is stock. Uh, stock DJI Go. It's, I've got a mixed mod firmware. Bottom is my boost app. One thing I have found is it seems like I'm getting further range if I do the mixed mod firmware in the drone using the 1.03.700 controllers uh, that I'm using here. So you can see my top is starting to, to fade there. I keep canceling the return to home uh, and keep pushing the drone out as far as it can go. You can see my horizontal speeds dropping. The bottom drone is continuing to advance uh, because it's using the boost app. We've lost all signal there on the top and I'm going to continue to hold that stick forward. Now eventually what happens is, is signal's lost and then I just have to wait. This is very nerve-wracking. Those of you that follow, um, remember the uh, Apollo missions or have studied those, know that when uh, when the the astronauts would re-enter, same thing's true with the shuttle. When the when the during re-entry, there's a blackout period where there's no communication possible. That's what I felt like doing this. Here I had my drone out over a city, an urban area, and I lost communication. Had no idea where it was. And if it had started to return home as it should, and then went down. Down, I wouldn't even have a GPS position to go find it based on uh, the last position that I had received on the transmitter. So it is a bit nerve-wracking. Now if you take a look on the bottom display, we're starting to stutter on the video. There at the top, now the drone is, has, is starting to pick up on its return. You can see now it's at 4,700 feet and it's zooming back home. The bottom one, we're starting to occasionally lose the image, but even the signal is uh, reaching, the video signal is reaching further. So I went ahead and stopped the top video. I looked back, found the frame in the video that had the maximum range that we got in standard um, FCC mode, 6,150 feet. That's the furthest that we got out in stock mode. Uh, we're still pushing outbound on the boost app. And there I've got video back. Again, lots of interference around here, although now you can see I'm finally making it even into a more rural area because I've pushed, uh, I'm pushing out towards two miles away. Of course, I and the transmitter are still located in a very dense area with lots of, uh, lots of interference. Um, so we'll watch and see how far we can push out. See, see how we compare. I think there's no question based on what we're seeing. These are the exact same flight path. If you watch the videos when they were paired up, you could see we were traveling over the same obstacles, same objects. I think there's no doubt that we are getting an increased signal strength and increased transmission power. The word is, and, and, and the, the source of this information has been sort of lost in time. Somebody maybe that was on the inside of uh, DJI got some data out. Uh, even these boost config files, I don't take credit for. They are uh, were sourced from some leak somewhere. Uh, my boost app, the main thing that I uh, have done for all of us is the ability to run the boost app side by side uh, or start with it and then switch over to the newer uh, DJI Go so you can have all of the uh, newer functions and features in DJI Go. Uh, but the word is, is that normal transmit power I I FCC is 0 0.4 watts and the boost app gets you to 1.5 watts. Now that sounds like more than a threefold increase in range is what you would expect, but it doesn't work that way. It's by the square root of the increase. So in theory, it should get us about a 1.9 times the range, not quite double. For those of you in CE countries, it should almost be a fourfold increase in your range because you're going from 0.1 watt to 0.4 watt from CE to FCC. That square root of that's fourfold square root of that would be doubling your range and then doubling it yet again so you should see almost a fourfold so here we go we're pushing out the video signal starting to stutter we've made it out into the countryside amazingly uh, we're 10,200 some feet away almost a full two miles at a very low altitude in a very um, signal um, uh, interference dense area I keep canceling the return to homes 
I did note that my battery power on the screen would not read correctly. It stopped, you can see there, at 77%. The good news is, is on the controller itself, I was getting an accurate battery read. So there we go. We're actually seeing the drone turn around. That's pretty amazing that we're still picking up the video feed as it turned around. And uh, now it's on its way back. One of the things I noticed with the Boost app is that... Um, and this may be an antenna orientation issue. When the um, uh, when you lose signal without the Boost app, just stock DJI Go. You're you. It's a long while during the return before you see video again. So let's compare these. Here we go. Our max range in Boost was 10,376. Theoretical range increase would be 1.94. We got an actual of 1.69. So not bad. Pretty close to. Uh, what we would expect. Here's another test. I went a little further west uh, from uh, the into a more urban area, took off from a home, um, and still flying out over a very residential area. Every one of these houses has Wi-Fi, I'm sure. Um, and again, we're still using those standard uh, 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 2.4 gigahertz frequencies. I went ahead and started the video a little further out. You can see the Top one again is without the boost app. We're starting to lose um, signal there. Now the interesting thing on this flight is uh, is we did it well, not not unexpectedly. We got out a little bit further because um, it's a less densely populated area, same altitude, different day that these flights were done. Um, I was surprised at how far I did get. Uh, without the boost app however as you're gonna see uh, I followed my protocol of flying until uh, the drone started its auto return from three seconds of signal loss and what you're gonna notice on the bottom video is it it I I think it was just sort of luck of the draw that I lost the signal for just a hair more than three seconds and it started its return to home. I really think that I could have pushed that drone out quite a bit further. And I'll show you when we compare when the signals get picked back up when the drones are headed home, which of course is a different antenna orientation, um, why I think that um, we... we got shortchanged on how far we got pushed out uh, with the boost app on this particular flight. So you can see the top one is, is really just hitting its limit there. It keeps tweaking out, tweaking back in. It was almost down for three seconds there, but it got back on board again in order to keep flying outbound. But it's about ready to give up. I was near a just a grass field airport that's in the vicinity, and so I kept getting uh, warnings about that. You notice the speed difference, though. Because we're starting to stutter on the signal, you'll notice the horizontal speed on the non-boost uh, flight is, is dropping because we keep losing signal and getting it back. Keep canceling the return to home. I have to say that this flight that you're seeing on the top half of the screen I thought I had lost my drone because you'll see how long it is before I get signal back. And it must be an antenna orientation issue, you know, the position of the antennas on the drone as it relates to where I am. Because again, I'm sitting inside of a house uh, behind double paned glass windows. Um, the altitude that I'm flying the drones is very low. Doing all of this again to try to limit my range. This The purpose of these videos is not to show you how far you can go with the Boost app. I'll do one of those because I actually live in the country and I have very little interference here and I'll do a video where I show you how far you can go. Thing is I've got to have somebody ready to receive the drone on the other end because I'm not going to get be able to make it back. Um, but this is to show you a comparison with intentional restriction of the transmission. So our bottom drone has pushed out. Uh, we're passing where we made it in the more urban area. Top one is still squeaking its way out at a horizontal speed of three to seven miles an hour. Made it out to 8,000 feet, though, on, on stock FCC. That's pretty impressive. I 
I don't recommend doing these kinds of flights. It's, it's a good way to possibly lose your drone, and if it goes down, you're not going to know where it went down. But I wanted to uh, demonstrate the functionality of this, uh, this Boost app and that it really works. So it looks like we've lost signal for good uh, or sufficiently on the top drone that uh, that it's or should have started to return to home. Now watch how long this takes. This is where I started to sweat because I thought I'd have a blackout of maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and it goes on and on. And I do note, and you'll, you, you will have noticed in the video, not only does the battery stop counting down on your Android device, although it's still showing it up on the display, but you do get these flashing uh, HD signal connection and or controller connection. I think that's largely due to interference. You can see I'm still pushing out. I'm over 12,000 feet out. And I think right here is where we lost it. Uh, for no we haven't yet we're still pushing out we're, there's where we lost it for just long enough that she did the 180 but notice my top drone has been coming home hopefully this whole time and I still don't have it this is where I was uh, was thinking I had just uh, done a very expensive test flight uh, I thought the thing had somehow gone down even though it should have had sufficient battery and and should have known its way home. So my bottom drone noticed this. I still have signal. Now I don't have video feed, but I still have a range. I, and in the map, I've got an orientation. I really never lost it other than about a hair longer than three seconds while it turned around. But I'm receiving it on the return, still 10,000 feet plus out. And the top drone has been coming home this whole time, hopefully, and I still don't have a connection to it. And now suddenly the top drone reappears. Look at that, 3,600 feet away. Look at how long that took. It got out to 8,000 feet, and it didn't reconnect until 3,600 feet on the return home. Must be an antenna orientation thing because it's the exact same flight path and, and, and altitude. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll compare uh, the numbers here. The difference is not as great on this flight, but I explained why I think that is. You can see we only got an, a, a range increase of one and a half times of what we were with stock. I think it would have been more, and here's why. Take a look at what it would have been, what it was on the pickup of the signal on the return. We picked up on the return flight from more than three times the distance. So there you have it. Um, I think that demonstrates the Boost app works. I've got links down below to a walkthrough on how to get into this kind of configuration. Um, there's links to uh, wonderful videos by uh, uh, Dig, uh, Digdat uh, Zero um, on how to do a lot uh, as well. Um, and then uh, a walkthrough for my uh, actual uh, Boost app and how to install it. Um, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helps. Go fly.